Hi Kelda, lovely, lovely to see you again. Unfortunately, today is not a day for, for being in the garden, so people won't hear the birds. No, no, no birds joining us today, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and welcome everybody to this particular podcast, which we thought would be useful to do as a summary. Like, where have we got to so far? And um, all of these podcasts are about um, enabling mental well-being. They're about helping us all. In particular, we started them because of where we're all at at the moment. But actually, they extend far beyond um, the lockdown and they really help us um, in terms of navigating our lives. So today's podcasts is a way of us drawing together some of the themes that we've been building over the last four and just summarising those and seeing what else comes up. Is that is that right, Kelda? Do you want to say anything more about that? Yes, yeah, so I always think of mental well-being really is if you think of, of mental well-being, well-being being like a table. And if your mental health is that table top, for a table to work, it needs table legs to hold it up. But what I found from my own journey was that I didn't know what those table legs were. No one told me about the table legs. Um, and so I, I worked really hard. I did a lot of research um, and, and worked out those table legs and, and what worked for me to hold up and stabilize my table. So my whole kind of aim now is to share those table legs because I see so many people that are struggling to cope with situations but if you actually had the table legs, the tools to be able to, to manage your mind, you know, it would then hold up that table, that, that tabletop, your mental well-being. So, yeah, the whole aim of these podcasts really have been to share those table legs um, and to give people the, the, the tools, the table legs to hold up um, that tabletop. Love it. Thank you. So shall we just describe just the table legs themselves, just even just say what they are, just in case people haven't listened to any of the others? Yeah, I mean, I think looking at what we've talked about in the podcast, and obviously these have been very specific to the situation we're all in with the coronavirus. Um, so, you know, really the benefits of helpful, healthy routines and habits um, your Google search part. So where, what are you focusing on? I, and what you focus on is what you see. So if you're focusing on neg negatives, what you will see is negatives and equally the same with positives. Um, we've also looked at the circles of influence and where you put your energy. Are you putting it into things that are under your control or out of your control? Um, and then today we really want to look at um, core values and you know what are your core values and, and are you staying true to them? But an overriding theme over all of those four table legs is the element of choice and responsibility. You know, we are sharing those tools, we're sharing these table legs. Bottom line is, you now have a, you now have a choice whether you're going to use those table legs and, and a responsibility um, to be accountable for, for your actions. You know, I think a lot of people can look to look outwards for the answers you know they expect others to provide them with the answers but bottom line is we are accountable we have to take responsibility it's down to us to, to put the table legs to put the tools into action and use them um, no one else can do it for us and I think that is hugely empowering isn't it so although responsibility feels like a word which is difficult and we wish we didn't have any responsibility, et cetera. Actually realizing that it, it is within our control, it's within our power to do what, you know, have the lives that we want and... and it, it's hugely empowering because, I, I mean, again, if you look at the current situation, so much is out of our control and it's taken away from us. But the one thing we have total control over is our attitude, as we talked about in, in Circles of Influence. And, and that then, if you can start to take um ownership of your choices and your responsibilities well um that's liberating because it suddenly opens up a whole new world of, of options and there's a book i've read recently um it's it's called you can't hurt me by a guy called david goggins um the language in it is 
foul so if you're at, at all precious about that don't read it but the message in it is incredible um and his whole message is about being accountable and taking responsibility so he created um an accountability mirror and he would look in that mirror every day and he would stick post-it notes on it and his um it, it's quite harsh it's no messing you know um but it's kind of do you know what if you're overweight don't look in the mirror and say i need to lose a few pounds you look in the mirror and you say i'm fat i need to exercise more and i need to eat, eat less take responsibility make a choice to change things you know and i found that hugely empowering myself because it stops you from blaming other people and using it as an excuse and bottom line is I, I spoke to a young person yesterday and she said oh it's just really difficult because there's this and there's that and, and I turned around and I said well do you know what man up because it's difficult for everyone now, that's a bit harsh but bottom line is it is with the current situation we're all in the same boat it's a tough I don't believe there's anyone that isn't struggling with this in some way, shape or form, some more than others, but we're all in a tough situation, but we have a choice as to how we deal with this situation. Um, don't expect someone else to sort it out for you, take responsibility, be accountable, sort as much as you can yourself. Yeah, and, and I think that sounds brilliant. Um, I'm just going to try and put myself in other people's shoes at the minute. So I'm actually feeling not, not at the top of my game, you know, so I am already starting from a position of feeling quite low. And yep. so suddenly I have to get myself to a point where I take responsibility and I'm just, I don't know, how do you move from feeling like you can't do stuff? It's, yes. it's about you. Yes. And it's not possible to really, to actually realizing it is about you like what's the link yep. yeah yeah and do you know it's such a great question rachel because the first the first step is everything we've talked about in these podcasts it's about being aware that you can so it's about being aware that the choice is yours it's not always an easy choice but it's your choice so I think everything we've talked about, whether it's what you're putting in your search bar, what habits you have and um, where you're putting your energy, we've said all the way through, you know, we'd keep this real. It's not easy. We recognize that. We acknowledge that. We accept that. But the choice is yours. No one else can do it for you. Only you can choose to choose what you put in your search bar to change unhelpful habits into more helpful habits to look at where you're using your energy and use it in the right place so first step is being aware that you can first step is being aware that you've got a choice second step is doing something about it um and i think the other thing with that which is really important to recognize is that it takes hard work you know it's a bit like changing those habits and when we said you don't go to the gym and just get fit overnight you have to keep working at it so all of these tools that we're sharing you don't become an expert in using them because you've used them once you know it, it's the same if you're using a gardening fork it, you know the first few times you use it it's a bit awkward but the more you use it and before you know it you become automatic autopilot with it you don't think about using it but it's exactly the same with, with these tools you have to practice you have to work at it it takes time and effort but the choice is yours <laughs> to do that and i'm just going to plug a little bit more here because i'm thinking okay so the first step is i'm aware i have to be aware that it's my choice yeah 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 how do I be aware of that? So I can look at everyone else and see them doing it because they're great. How do I know I can do it and it's my choice and it's me that's stopping myself? Like, have you got a story or anything that got you to realise that for yourself? Or um, yeah, I mean, I guess this, this maybe isn't showing it in a positive way, but hey, we've always said, let's keep it real. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go back to the Atlantic and 
when I was in a very negative place out there and you know I was so down I was so negative I I was looking for everything negative but you know what I was aware that it was my choice and I was aware that I was choosing to look for the negatives and then once I became aware that that was my choice I still felt like I was in control even though I was still feeling down and negative it was like yep but I'm choosing to do it so when I choose to do it differently I can do but right now I want to be negative so I, I was speaking to another person the other day who was on a really bad day I can tell you this story actually because I know she won't mind me sharing it she came to me saying oh I was having a bad day and I went and spoke to my neighbor and you know I was crying and I was a bit upset and then the next day my neighbor came to me and said don't worry I'm not going to tell anyone and she said I can't believe she's done that I can't believe she's done that like I just can't trust anybody anymore like how could she possibly do that and I kind of went whoa 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 hang on a minute Maybe she was saying that because she just wanted to know, you to know that you could trust her and she wasn't going to tell anyone and she didn't want you to worry about it. And we recognised that um, because of the situation we we're all in and, you know, this young person had a heightened emotion, she saw that one statement, oh, I'm not going to tell anyone, as a threat. You know, does that mean I can't trust you? Does that mean you think that you were going to tell you? She saw all these negatives. And then I was kind of like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. What about, she was actually just being nice. And what I'm hearing from an outside perspective is your neighbor was looking out for you and being really kind. And she kind of went, oh, oh yeah. Haven't thought of it like that. And I think, that's a great example, but sometimes, especially at the minute, we get a bit irrational and then we stop seeing it. We, we almost lose the ability to apply those tools. So sometimes that awareness can't happen till afterwards, but it's learning from that. So, you know, actually recognizing that um, I am choosing or I chose, at, in that situation, I chose to see the negatives. But now I've stepped back from it, I can see that there were other options, but I was choosing. And, and again, all you can do is keep working at it. So there is no, there's no quick fix. You know, you're not gonna listen to these podcasts and never have a negative day again in your life. That's not reality. But being aware and learning to start to recognize it and gradually over time it will get easier and it will become a habit um, so that awareness even if it doesn't work just being aware is still the first step and I guess I would just add to that to say that um, we don't have to believe it's true to try it out so there's something about actually okay well maybe i have got a choice i don't i don't believe it i don't think it's possible i don't think i can do it but i'm just going to try and give it a go anyway to see like almost prove myself right rather than decide without action what, what yeah you know? there's a great saying that i love that is notice what you notice mm -hmm. so you know for a day try putting something different in your search bar and notice what you notice mm -hmm. And, you know, if suddenly you get to the end of the day and you go, well, actually, I felt better to say, hmm, maybe it does work, you know. So just that notice what you notice is, is really powerful, really powerful. And there's something else to add into that, um, Rachel, because we've touched on core values um, in a previous podcast. But, you know, again, I think as much as responsibility and choice is, a, is an overriding theme, to me, everything comes down to your core values. Um, and the way I describe your core values is if you think of a compass um, and 
the north, south, east and west are the four main points that give you your main direction when you're using a compass. Well, your core values are your four main steering points, for want of a better word, through life. Um, they are north, south, east and west through life. And a lot of people don't even know what their core values are. But, you know, the, the keys in the, 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 not the question, but what it says on the tin, really, they're core, they're core. And once I learn what my core values are, and, and mine are um, respect, development, freedom, and loyalty. Although sometimes I forget what the last one is. I, I have got them written down. <laughs> um, but with everything, I come back to my core values. You know, am I staying true to my core values? Now, a lot of the time, if you think of everything we've talked about, habit, search bar, circles of influence, for me to stay true to my core values, I have to be creating good routines and habits because otherwise I'm not going to be developing. I'm not going to be respectful to myself or to others. You know, um, if I look at what I'm putting in my search bar, you know, again, if I'm putting negative stuff in my search bar, I'm having a negative impact on others. I'm not staying true to my core values. So um, I really, really, really encourage people to write them down, write them down and really put some time and effort into thinking, what are my core values? Um, and they can change. You know, it's not if you write them down to say, that's it, they have to be your core values for the rest of your life. But I honestly believe once I learned what my core values were, um, it made life so much easier. And, and even through the whole coronavirus situation, I am going to stay true to my core values through this coronavirus as much as I can. So, you know, I still want to be respectful to myself and respectful to others, respect the NHS, respect the government and the rules that they're enforcing development okay I want to use this time to learn how can I develop myself how can I develop others in this time freedom that's a difficult one when you're on lockdown but actually I can still go walk my dogs and I can still keep control of what I can control you know so you can you can bring it all back and um someone yesterday was talking to me about a lack of self-belief and I said, you know, the one thing that will give you self-belief is by creating your own evidence. And by that, we looked at core values. And so you wrote down his core values. And they're like, right, at the end of each day, ask yourself, have I stayed true to my core values? If the answer is yes, there is your evidence for self-belief because you've been the person you wanted to be. You've stayed true to your core values. You've acted in a way that you want to act. So you believe in yourself because you've just provided the evidence that you've done that. Now, sometimes, especially in the situation we're in, you might not stay true to them. That's okay. But it's then recognizing, okay, actually today I didn't stay true to my core values what can I do differently tomorrow to make sure I do um because you know what's in the past is in the past you can't change it what you can change is what you do from this point on so actually whether it be through life through the coronavirus or just today you haven't stayed true to your core values okay it's what you do from this point on is important. So what can you do differently moving forward? Hey, guess what? Choice and responsibility. The choice is yours. Take responsibility for your actions. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Kelda. So I'm just going to pick up on how, how do you discover your core values? So is it that you just sit and think about them? How do you actually really understand what those are for you? How did you do it? Uh, I just started off by writing them down so literally kind of you know okay what are my four core values and then I changed them um so I wrote them down and then I was like actually you know that's not true that's that's not a core value because there can only be four you know you can't have more than 
one north, south, east and west. What you can have, I call them core value add-ons. So, you know, you've got a northeast, a southeast, a southwest, a northwest. They're other points that are really important to you, but they're not your core values. Um, so I created my list of core values, four core values, and then my core value add-ons. But then what I found was I actually swapped them around a bit. Mm. And it took me quite a while to really get to the point that I went, yep, yep, those are the most important things. Um, so, yeah, just just take time out. And, again, don't overthink. Go with gut. It could be 10 minutes, you know, just put them down but then reflect review change um until it's a bit like the compass aligning you know I think it can swing around a bit and then all of a sudden you'll go yeah yeah they're my four and that's when your north is is lined up you know um so yeah, it can be work in progress and it can be a dynamic process. And, you know, as you change, your core values might change. That's fine. Um, but a starting point is to just, and I always say, write them down and stick them on your fridge or stick them somewhere. Because I kind of sort of forgot what my last one was. I know what they are and I've got them written down. But sometimes you're just like, oh, what was my last one again? But until you get into the habit of, of being very aware of your core values, just draw your compass, write the points on and stick it on your fridge as a as a little trigger to remind you. I, I love that analogy and I might do some thinking about that for flying school and how we can help people discover them. I think in my uh, experience, one of the things that's helped me figure out my core values is, is actually looking at my frustrations. So the things that drive me mad, the things that I might be heard moaning about or getting cross about, is probably linked to a core value of mine that's that's just not working or is the opposite. And so it's been a nice way of just figuring out and learning about ourselves, I guess. Do, do you know, really, really interesting sort of thought analogy with the whole compass and core values. If you think a compass is a magnetic field, um, so we tend to attract people with similar core values mm -hmm. and repel people with different core values in the same way that magnetic fields attract and, and repel. Now, sometimes when someone annoys you or you don't get on with them, it's not that they're a bad person. It's just you've got different core values. And once you start recognizing that, it can make you really OK with um, not with other people's behavior, because, I, you know, sometimes you might still disagree with someone's behavior. But if you actually start bringing it down to core values and you go well actually they've just got different core values to me and I'm, I'm going to agree to disagree because our magnetic fields are repelling because we've got different core values and that can be really useful um, in managing those frustrations. Yeah I love that thank you. <laughs> so in terms of us pulling together some of the um podcasts that we've done so far is there anything else that um you think we need to share or shall we start to sum this up a bit yeah i think i think we can sum it up you know if we wanted to look at key points to, to take away from these you know key table legs i mean i think when we're looking at our sat nav analogy, analogy first and foremost go on the journey you know embrace the journey the good bits the bad bits you know everywhere will give you a view whether it's a view you want or a view you don't um and just learn from it and keep moving because that's the only way you will get a better view if you're not getting the, the view you want um and take responsibility if things aren't as you want them to be if you're not feeling how you want to feel if you're not acting how you want to act or if life isn't giving you you want what you want it to to give you take responsibility and and put in place what you can put in place to do things differently to to make things change um you do have a choice over your attitude you do have a choice over your your mind and how you manage your mind 
not easy as as we've already recognized you know so that's not saying for a second that that it is easy and that you'll never have another negative day but um you know and be accountable um you know I think for me that's massive if I have a bad day if I have a lazy day if I do something wrong I'll hold my hands up and be accountable and then I'll go what can I do differently to make it better tomorrow um and that's empowering that's empowering and and then you know that brings that whole positive spiral from self-belief to empowerment to um confidence um so yeah control the controllables um enjoy the journey and learn from it wow that's a fantastic summary and i i just wanted to remind people of something else great that you said in the middle of this podcast which is if you want to build self-belief build evidence and i just think that's very empowering isn't it and so sometimes we think things aren't working for us um because we haven't seen any results but sometimes the results take a while to come through um and so, yeah go. Th- that that whole build evidence you know I often say to people ask yourself what is my evidence so you know when people say I can't do this or everyone hates me or I you know what is your evidence and quite often when you look at that there isn't any the only evidence is what you're telling yourself. So actually look at what is my evidence, good and bad, you know? So actually I could do the same now. Okay, what is my evidence that I'm still committed to training? Well, you know, do you know what? I'm getting off my backside every day and I'm still training. I might not be training like I used to before lockdown, but I'm still training, so I'm doing what I can do. So yeah, there's my evidence. I'm still being the best I can be. I'm still staying true to my core values. So it's a great useful question brilliant thank you so much Kelda really looking forward to continuing to do these and the next sort of batch that we'll look at going forward yeah and sorry Rachel just to finish I think it's really important to say to people you know yes we're saying these are our table legs but you know different people need different table legs so there's there's way more than four um And it's a case of then choosing, (laughs) there's that word again, um, the table legs that work for you. So, yeah, we're going to keep sharing table legs so that people have got a selection to choose from. Fantastic. Thank you so much for this morning and see you next time. Bye. Bye.